Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to The Creative World. My name is Ryan, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys a quick and dirty lighting and editing breakdown of the following image. To do this, I used a Sony Alpha 6500, a Sigma 35mm 1.4 lens, and three Young Nuo YN560 Mark IV speed lights. My camera settings were ISO 200, f2.8, and 1 200th shutter speed. The first light was at 1 28th power, 24 millimeters, shooting through a medium sized beauty dish directly above my subject. Lights two and three were both at 1 32nd power, 24 millimeters, and shooting through a medium sized softbox on either side of my subject. Here is what each light looks like individually. Here are all the lights together. And this is the final edit. I start off by setting the aspect ratio of my image to 16 by 9. I then extend the sides of my image using the Content Aware Scale tool. I used frequency separation to clean up the seamless backdrop. Using the high frequency layer and the patch tool, I removed any of the wrinkles. And on the low frequency layer, I used a lasso tool and blur to even out the levels and colors. I used these same techniques for my skin retouching. I then used two curves layers, one to darken and one to brighten, to dodge and burn my subject. This step is crucial in giving a little bit more depth to your image. I wanted to create a flail and some chains in 3D. Now 3D isn't the focus of this breakdown, but I will briefly go over the steps I took to create them. I used a program called Blender, which is a free 3D modeling tool. If you want to get into Blender, I highly suggest learning this program. It is very powerful and, and of course it is free. First, I created one link of the chain and then I duplicated it many times alternating orientation until I had a chain. I then duplicated that entire chain a couple times and positioned it around my canvas until I had a composition that I was happy with. I then created the flail using a sphere and some cones and basic primitive modeling techniques. The textures were a simple metal texture, nothing special. Whenever you're creating 3D objects or backgrounds for your image, the most important steps are making sure that you're framing and perspectives match, as well as your lighting. Since I knew exactly how I lit my subject, I created digital lights to replicate that same lighting in my 3D scene. I also created a ground plane that was invisible but acts as a shadow catcher. This is so I can import the shadows of the chains into Photoshop, making it look more realistic. I then brought my 3D render into Photoshop. I used various adjustment layers such as curves and hue and saturation adjustments to help fix the lighting so that my chains better match the original image. The next step is the one that took the longest, adding in all of the blood. I used blood splatters from my blood asset pack that you can get over on my Gumroad, link in the description below. I simply dragged in stock images of blood and used the perspective tool and warp tool to get the blood to better match my image. After I had the blood placed where I want it, I changed the blending mode of that layer to multiply. I then added a mask to that layer and painted away areas that I didn't want to see the blood. You will also see me frequently using the smear tool and smudge tool to help kind of blend in the blood with certain areas areas of the image. There's no right or wrong way to do this, I just kind of messed around until it looked good. Adding blood to the change was relatively easy. Since the chains were made in 3D, I could easily make a selection of those chains and add that to the layer mask of the blood. I eventually got to the point where I wanted to add some blood to my subject's face and clothes. Now adding in blood to the ground is relatively easy as I can just drag in the image, change the blending mode and it looks good. But you notice that if you ever get blood on your skin or clothes, it smears a bit. So to get my blood to look a little bit better, I also hand painted in some extra blood using some watercolor brushes. After I placed all of my stock photos of blood, I went on to painting in some extra blood using some watercolor brushes. If you're using Photoshop, you can go over to your brush settings, click on the options button in the top right and then select get more brushes and this is where you can download Kyle's watercolor brushes as you can see these brushes are great for creating very realistic watercolor like textures but it also happens to work out very well for painting in blood to paint in the blood by hand simply create a new layer set the blending mode of that layer to multiply and then select a dark red as your brush color mess around with the different watercolor brushes to see what looks best use many different brushes in different areas to get a more organic and natural look to your blood You'll see here that I mixed in with the hand-painted blood some of my stock images of blood. Blending these two elements together will create the most realistic results. After I was finished with adding all the blood, I then added some atmospheric particles from my Fire and Embers asset pack. I then moved on to the final steps that I take on all of my images. With the topmost layer selected, I press Ctrl, Alt, Shift, and E 
or on a Mac it's Command Option Shift and E, to merge all visible layers into a new layer. I set the blending mode of that layer to Overlay, and then I went up to Filter, Other, and then High Pass Filter. I then selected a radius that yielded the sharpening that I was happy with. I then moved on to adding some stylized chromatic aberration. I did this again by merging all visible layers into a new layer on top. I then double clicked that layer to open up the blending options and then I unchecked one of the color channels. From here, to create some aberration, simply offset that layer by a couple pixels. You can do it by moving the layer or even adding some motion blur. I usually find this effect to be a little too strong on my subject's face, so I will add a layer mask to this layer and erase away areas that I don't want. To create a little more visual interest and tie things together, I added in a couple of lens flares to the sides of my image. Simply dragged in a stock photo of a lens flare, set the blending mode to screen, and adjusted the hue saturation and levels to fit my image. Next, I merged all visible layers into a new layer and then opened that layer in Camera Raw, going up to Filter and selecting Camera Raw. This plugin works a little bit like Lightroom, but inside of Photoshop. Here I adjusted various levels, curves, color, and added in some film grain. The very last step is adding in a color lookup adjustment table for some final color grading. Here I cycled through various LUTs that I have, both free and purchased, and you can find a lot of these online. I set the blending mode of that color lookup adjustment layer to color, so that way it doesn't affect the values of my image as I already have it where I want it. Guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, maybe give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, consider subscribing. By the way, guys, if you want an even deeper look into my editing process, as well as getting your hands on a Photoshop document, consider joining my Patreon. Click on the link below to head on over to my page where you can learn a little bit more. And until next time, stay creative.